one little bitty, little tiny prayer changed my life. Totally changed my life. I want to talk to you about it today. Glad you're here. Bless Leaf Daily. And um, Kyle Hoover, lead pastor of Bless Leaf. All around nice guy. Today I uh, am smoking a, a cigar that, uh, it's a pretty cool project, pretty cool story. This is the uh, Kilo. Hope that's coming through real good there on the uh, the video. But this is a cigar that uh, is put out by uh, Miami uh, Cigar Company. And uh, Barry Stein uh, is the one that uh, was, this is his brainchild. And uh, for those of you who don't know who Barry is, Barry uh, was originally a blogger and uh, cigar reviewer and uh, went to work for Miami in the, and as part of their staff there. Uh, and, I, and I believe does marketing all that stuff. Uh, anyway, so it's interesting to me, as someone who makes cigars, and manufactures cigars, blends cigars, uh, to taste something that uh, a reviewer has, has blended. Because um, now I'm going to be the reviewer. That's my time to shine. No, it's, uh, it's a cool thing because, uh, you know, they smoke a lot of great cigars and they get their commentary and it's kind of like, okay, well, now put up or shut up, buddy. So I did have this cigar uh, before, uh, and, but I had had a lot of cigars that day. So smoking it on a fresh palate and excited to get into it. I'm going to light it up and, and uh, tell you what to think. Okay, so you're not going to see this in the video, but uh, it took me forever to get this thing lit, not because of the cigar, but because the lighters that I have all just went to pot, went to nothing, ran out of gas, which happens. Uh, frustrating when that happens, but it happens. So, initial puffs on this. Big, bold, big, bold flavor. Spicy. I didn't give you the deets on the cigar. The wrapper on this is Sumatra. And uh, I think this is a gorgeous looking wrapper. I like a, a model looking wrapper. Some very cool veins. These take great pictures. That's why I like them. Instagram all the time. These are these are great cigars for pictures. Uh, the, the binder on this is Cameroon. Which Cameroon is, is a pretty expensive leaf. So that's always fun. Not something that you really see in, very commonly used now in cigars. And this has uh, fillers of uh, two Dominican Lajeros. Which is... Cool. Nicaraguan Lajero. Once again, I'm getting the strength. Strength. And uh, some Pennsylvania Broadleaf. MSRP on this cigar is 8 bucks. So and this is a Robusto size. Oh. Yeah, that's... Uh, it's nicaraguan and the boldness and the spiciness. Really through the nose, I can still feel it burning back there. I dig it. So... We can see we can see where you're coming from now, Barry, when you're reviewing your cigars. It's always interesting to. Uh, I wish every every blogger could go blend a cigar. <laughs> every cigar reviewer, that'd be a very interesting uh, interesting uh, cigar to smoke. But anyway, I want to share one little thought with you today. And I was thinking back to a time uh, when I was in high school, and uh, God really started to get a hold of my life. And growing up, my my dad and and grandpa and family they're all they're all pastors. They're all in ministry and stuff like that, which is great. But uh, you grow up as a pastor's kid, and you're at church all the time, and you hear all the sermons, and you know all the Bible. So you know, I was I won every Bible quiz we had to do in Sunday school or or at some church camp. I mean, I'm like the Babe Ruth of Bible quizzes as a pastor's kid, just yeah, however pastor's kid is. So you get, you kind of get to the place where you kind of been there, done that, you've seen it. You know, you know, at least for me, God is, God is real. God is good. I love God. Uh, Want to go to heaven? Know how to get to heaven. I understand the theology and, you know, I'm talking, I'm, 15, 16 years old. I get it. Uh, and when I was that age, had a group of friends, we you know, went to church, and, you know, we'd all come in, we'd all sit right in the back row. 
right on the back row. And uh, worship would go on. We wouldn't worship. We'd stand up. We wouldn't sing. We wouldn't enter into the worship experience. We, you know, we, we were there. We weren't causing any trouble, that much trouble. We weren't being that disruptive or that loud. There were times, but not generally. You know, we were, we were good and all that stuff. But it wasn't, I didn't have a passion. I didn't have a passion for God. I knew it all here. Trust me, I knew it all in my head. And I had accepted Christ. And I know that if something happened to me and I died or whatever, I'd, I would have gone to heaven. It just, you know, it, it was cool, and, and uh, you know, I'd wear a Christian t-shirt and all that stuff, but as far as having that that love, that passion, that, that desire, it would just kind of, yeah, I can say that I was probably probably pretty lukewarm. And again, I'm a teenager, and so you're still kind of figuring stuff out. Well, as a teenager anyway, those of you who have ever known a teenager or been a teenager, um, it's kind of hard to talk to a person that already knows everything, right? So being a teenager is bad enough. So that's just generally where I was coming from. Then couple that with the fact that I was pastor's kid and I had heard everything before. It was really hard to get through to me with something new or something relevant. And I see the same church people uh, hear my dad preach every week, which, which was great. But, you know, you just get into that routine, that rut, that whatever. Here's what happened one day. I don't know why, other than just God being cool. Uh, my dad said a verse. I couldn't tell you what the sermon was about. I couldn't tell you what anything else happened. But I remember, and I, and I had heard the verse 10,000 times before. And this time I heard it, though. The Holy Spirit kind of ministered this to me, to my heart, to my young little teenage heart. And kind of got me thinking about it, I guess I could say. I didn't even realize probably that it was God working on me. Because, you know, God knows how to talk to you. He knows your personality. He knows how, uh, what's going to get your attention. He knows how you need to hear stuff, how you're communicated with, what your personality communication type is or whatever. Your love language, he gets it. I like to think. I like to think through stuff. And, uh ponder and mull stuff over. So my dad read a verse out of Matthew 5, 6. Very common verse in the Beatitudes. And uh, yeah, still the cigar, by the way, still strong. Pepper. Little leather, little bitty kind of sweetness. It's it's very very Nicaraguan so far. Let me read the scripture to you, Matthew five, six. I'm sure you've heard it. It says, "Blessed are they, which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled." You know, I had to learn this verse in Sunday school. We learned the Beatitudes. We uh, we went through all that stuff. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. In short, I I started thinking. I want to be filled. I want to be blessed. I want, you know, I want the fullness of God in my life. I want to have a good life. You know, uh, as a teenager that had a very different definition than what I, as a, as a man in my 30s, would, would now define that as. But, you know, uh, it, it was a good thing nonetheless. And uh, so I just got my wheels turning. So I was like, okay, Lord, well, I do want to be filled and I want to be, you know, blessed and I want to be full of righteousness and you and you know I'm, I'm not against you I'm just not that excited about you frankly that's just pretty much where I was at and I would hunger and thirst but I can't make myself get hungry and I can't make myself get thirsty see because we understand this I don't have to try to get hungry I'm just going to naturally if I don't eat for a period of time I'm going to naturally get hungry if I don't drink water for a period of time, I'm, I'm going to get thirsty. We, those are natural things that happen automatic, on their own. But where? Oh, don't you go out. See, all these cigars have to stand up to my uh, my talking while I'm smoking them. So I may have to... Oh, sorry, that's loud. I may have to relight...
So don't blame the cigar because this is this, every time you see me re, relight in the video, it's my fault. It's all my fault. I take the blame. Barry, Barry, you're a good man doing a good work, Barry. And Miami Cigar Company. God bless. Now, as a as a teenager, I I totally understand uh, that if I go for more than about 45 minutes without eating, I'm going to be hungry. So. I got the hunger and the thirsting thing, but Lord, these are phenomena that occur very, very uh, automatically and very frequently in my teenager life. Uh, and here's here's the here's what I want to get to. This is the one point I want to make. The Holy Spirit gave me an idea, gave me a thought, and I've talked a little bit about prayer. And God gives me these these little prayers, these little ideas, these little revelations. I say uh, because they're little God thoughts and. And I'll just pray these things, and I, I try to incorporate them not only into prayer, and I don't want to make, you, make it sound like there's, there's some sort of magic prayer, and if you just say these words, and this and this, it's not like that. This is a, a revelation. This is a, a philosophy of, of life and something that I pray in an attitude in my heart that I want to have and that I want to share with you. But the Holy Spirit just whispered this to me. He said, and, and the thought just dawned on me, I, I can pray Lord, I want to hunger and thirst after hunger and thirsting. And that was when that thought came to me, <clears throat> I recognized that that was not my thought. And I was like, wow. I think God like totally just like talked to me right now. That was crazy. That was that was crazy. Because it did. And uh, you know, it's funny when God says something to you. It's like his words are pregnant with even more revelation. It's like when you study the Bible. There's words on the page and you can study that, but there's even more revelation as you start to uh, see it from the Holy Spirit, illuminates it from a different perspective to you. Start to, you start to see more on the different dimensions and the different applications and something you've read a thousand times. You can read it again and it's so pertinent to the, the situation that you might be in. And you're like, wow, Lord, well, that's amazing. Because his words are... are, are Alive. It's just. It's like it gives birth to even more. They're they're multi-dimensional. It seems like. Well, I started to pray that, and really what that was was that was God saying to me, and I understand it now, is that you don't have to feel. It's not based on what you feel like. It's based on the decision of your heart. It's based on faith. If you want to hunger and thirst after righteousness, but your emotions aren't behind it. You don't feel like that, but, you know, at that time I had a very cerebral relationship with God. I mean, God was in my heart. I accepted Jesus in my heart and all that, but there was no passion. You know, you could be in a relationship with somebody and love that person and have a very cerebral, a very soulish, I guess it's, I could say, uh, relationship with them. But it's much different when there's that heart, where there's that passion. You, you people, you know what I'm talking about. So what the Lord was 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 leading me to in my in my young life and my young understanding was that despite how you feel you, the the kingdom of God is not based on what you feel like it's based on what you believe it's based on really what you release your faith for what you faith for you you get it's done to you according to your faith the part of the gospel that works for you is the part that you believe that's a that's a major major thing to understand and so the way he put it to me was that you know well you can hunger and thirst after hunger and thirsting so I started to pray that and did I did I feel it when I started praying? No, I just started to just just to say it. And and I had a job. I had jobs growing up. My dad thought it was very important to teach his sons, me and my brother, uh, uh, work. And uh, so we worked. <laughs> and uh, I remember being twelve years old, and and uh, oh, it was it was time for you to get an official job now. So I my job was. Um, mowing all the church lawns until the I got promoted to janitor. And so we had an 11-acre campus. Half of it was just field, but the other half was all built. Uh, big gymnasium complex, uh, school, church facilities, classrooms. It was, a, it, was, it was a pretty big complex, four houses. And I had to, on the complex, run the houses. And, uh, and I had to mow lawns. And that was my job. Now I now I look back at that, and I'm like, for what I made, that was really like child labor, which kind of seems messed up. But to me now, as a dad, is is awesome. I am mean, serious. It is just awesome. That is dad, good for you. Thank you so much. So at this time, I was the janitor at the church, and so I would 
go around and I clean the toilets and I uh, uh, mop the floors, I vacuumed, I, I cleaned this massive thing and, 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 and it kept me in money and you know it was a good thing. I got money as a teenager, I always had money to go do stuff I wanted to do, you know, got a car, put gas in the car, bought clothes, did all that great stuff. My dad blessed me in that, but he taught me how to work and that you're not above any job. If you need work, you work. So anyway, that's a different, that's a different sermon. My point is that as I was going around cleaning the church, and I'd listen to music, and I'd listen to Aerosmith. While I was cleaning the church, I was listening to Aerosmith, which is awesome. <laughs> uh, and, uh, but I would, that, that prayer would just, it just stuck with me for a while. So I would be vacuuming in the church sanctuary, listening to my music or whatever. And that prayer, that thought, just kept, it just kept coming up in my mind all the time. And every time I think about it, I just pray it. And I just feel like, you know, Lord, I want to hunger and thirst after hunger and thirsty. God, I want to put, basically what this means is God put that passion in me. God, I'm praying for the passion to be passionate. God, you're the one that, and I know this now, that is the one who, who, who works in me to will and to act. And so, Lord, I'm, I'm inviting you in to stir, to stir me up, God, to stir me up. And as a teenager, you know, that, uh, that was a major thing because our, my attitude was just like, yeah, you know, whatever, typical teenager kind of thing. And as I begin to pray that, the Lord was faithful to me, and I began to get a real, a real passion, a hunger and a thirst for the Word of God. I wanted, I wanted to read the Bible. I was curious about what was in the Bible. That was a new feeling to me because I, I thought I already knew everything. But I got curious about what was in the Word. I got, when I would hear, i go to church and I'd hear people start to worship. And in my heart, I wanted to, I wanted to engage that. I wanted to, I wanted to give God worship. I wanted to sing the song, but I didn't want to sing it just to sing it. I wanted to sing it to God. I wanted to love Him with this song. And that's, that's worship. And bring Him an offering and, and all that. And I wanted to give to God. And I wanted to do all these things. And my, you know, my spirit, man, began to get stirred up, began to, began to hunger, and began to thirst. And you know, if, if, I was, uh, if I was out of town or for whatever reason, if I, if I got a cold or something and I missed church, I, I mean, I missed church. I missed going. I wanted to be there. I wanted, uh, you know, I hungered for it. I thirsted for it. It was an amazing thing. And that's a prayer. And, uh, you know, I know I talked about a few of these uh, here in a teaching uh, uh, a couple weeks ago or whatever. But it's one of those little prayers that God brings back up into my mind, and he did today, about hunger and thirst after hunger and thirsting. And, you know, I, I want to hunger and thirst after righteousness, because, Lord, because I want to be filled. And uh, what I, the reason I bring this up for you today is because you might be a kind of person that's walked with God for a really long time, uh, or maybe you're somebody that uh, just made a decision and just kind of just, you know, that's yeah, just kind of there. And it's, it's here in your brain, and you know all the right stuff, and you know what's true, and you know all that stuff, but there, there, there's, there's no passion there. And I just, I want to challenge you to do what I did, to just pray, Lord, I don't, I don't feel hungry for you. I don't feel thirsty for you. But I want to hunger and thirst after hunger and thirst. Put that passion in me, God. And I know also that is a, a prayer, and that's a that's an attitude, that's a that's a faith statement uh, from your heart that God will definitely honor. Lord, let us hunger and thirst after hunger and thirsting. Ah. Object lesson. Coffee for those of you who are listening to it. I just took a drink of coffee. So I'll say it again, Matthew 5, 6. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, righteousness for they shall be filled. I want, I want your life to be full, and, and the Word says even to overflow. And uh, that's my prayer for you. And uh, there's nothing, nothing, nothing better than having an, what we call an on-fire relationship with God, a passionate relationship with God. It's awesome. And to me, there's nothing more miserable than being a lukewarm Christian. It is just friggin' miserable. So if that's you today and you're like, I am friggin' miserable. I am I do feel lukewarm. I do not feel passionate. I have, you know, I I, I don't feel like I even want to pursue God. I just I'm not hungry for his presence. I really don't have a desire to read the word. Pray that. Pray that. Pray that. Appreciate you watching today. Uh remember blessedleaf.com if you're not a member, join up. It's an online cigar church. It's friggin' awesome. 
Also, uh, we're on Instagram and Twitter at blessed underscore leaf. We do post cool stuff. I just posted a fried turkey on there. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, anyway, I just want to, I said crack myself up. Uh, I uh, appreciate you being here. I really, really do. If we can help you with anything, please get in contact with us. You can uh, contact us via blessedleaf.com. And uh, we love you and we appreciate you. And uh, I will, I'll catch you later. God bless you. Bye-bye.